Let's talk about the people casting their vote in the United States of America because we reported to you on Friday after that debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump on Thursday night on CNN that there was no hope really that Joe Biden could beat him given how poor he was when he was in that election, when he was in that uh, uh, debate on live on TV. Let's talk now, though, uh, to a man who knows what's going to happen next. Charles Feldman, he's the host of KNX In Depth in Los Angeles. They've spent uh, the whole weekend, the Biden family, supposedly uh, sort of having talks and discussions about whether Joe Biden should drop out of the race. Democrats are urging him to do so. The New York Times is urging him to do so. CNN is urging him to do so. But apparently he's going to stick with it. Let's talk to Charles Feldman right now, uh, who's actually, I'm told, currently in Norway. Charles, very good morning to yeah. you. Good morning. The debate was so bad, I figured that Norway was the safest place to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's a very, very good idea. There's an awful <laughs> lot of people I've been speaking to over the weekend back in the US um, who can't believe that Joe Biden, and particularly Jill Biden, um, is so keen for him to stay in the race and to prove that he's not a doddering, um, hopeless, useless candidate who can't remember his own name and can't finish a sentence. Well, you know, once somebody becomes president of the United States, and somebody like Joe Biden, who, remember, has wanted to be president of the United States yeah. for a good number of years, decades, right. really, it's very difficult to convince somebody like that to voluntarily step down. So uh, you're quite right. I mean, his family tried uh, at Camp David uh, to talk to him about it, although the reporting is that they have urged him to stay in which would be sort of contrary to what the mood is among many, certainly top donors right. in the Democratic Party who want him to get out. Well, the thing is that, you know, I've, I've been talking, as I say, to, to a lot of Democrats who even as recently as, say, two weeks ago, thought that Joe Biden was still going to be the best candidate to go up against Donald Trump. But after Thursday night, you know, they've even become convinced that he can't possibly do it. You know, the next debate is due in September. Suddenly we've got, you know, CNN and even the New York Times writing a leader, an editorial, saying it's yeah. time for him to step aside. I mean, can he can he kind of give, um, um, can, he, can he ignore that, I suppose, is the question? Well, can he ignore it? Yes. Uh, is it a good idea for him to ignore it? Maybe not. So they're two kind of different uh, questions. You know, if you look at the polling, uh, we're in a situation right now that's equivalent to if you've ever gone into a restaurant, Mike, and you mm. looked at the menu and you thought, you know, there's really nothing here I want to eat. Right. Uh, that's kind of the way the polling shows the vast majority of Americans feel right now. They don't really uh, like uh, Joe Biden, most of them. They don't really like Donald Trump, most of them, according to the polls. And yet, at the moment, those are apparently the two candidates. And whether or not Joe Biden voluntarily decides to bow out, only he really knows the answer to that. If I had to guess, Mike, my answer would be at the moment, he won't. Interesting, because, of course, uh, the, the, the man in the frame, supposedly, is Gavin Newsom. He's not said very much, has he? And I think whenever he's asked about it, he's basically said, well, you know, a bit like football uh, managers here say, well, well, there isn't a vacancy, so I'm not really interested in a job for which there isn't a vacancy. Right. Well, Governor Newsom of California has been sort of rehearsing unofficially to, to be president for a couple of years now. The problem with Newsom, though, is that uh, I'm not so sure he is sellable to the vast majority of Americans. He goes over fairly well, of course, in California. He would go over fairly well along the Northeast, you know, New York, Massachusetts, maybe Pennsylvania. Whether or not Gavin Newsom, who is pretty much to the left of the Democratic spectrum, right. not quite all the way to the left, but left enough, uh, would really get much votes in the middle part of the country. Right. Because I'm also told that there's a bit of a backlash going on against the sort of left side of the democratic uh, regime, shall we say. I'm told that, you know, uh, in New York there's a couple of people standing uh, against the left-wing type Democrats, you know, the squad, if you like, um, who uh, uh, were kind of, you know, circling around behind AOC, that there's actually a, a kind of a move to try and put the Democrats as slightly more as a centrist party now. Well, that's right. And, and I think that's the same for both parties, actually, the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, you know, most American voters uh, traditionally tend to be in the center of things, not 
anywhere to the extreme of the left or to the extreme of the right. And the, the problem with the Democratic Party at the moment is that there is this sort of rebellion from the center against the wokeness, if you will, of the extreme left. But of course, the Republicans have a similar issue, don't they? Uh, on the Republican side, you've got you know, sort of the, the more traditional conservative Republicans. Mm. And, you know, that's quite different than those who are adherents to the so-called Trump philosophy. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, I mean, the, the, sort of the, the, the kind of the perceived wisdom, I suppose, if for want of a better term, is that, you know, if Biden gets all the way to the convention, there is a way that he can be replaced at the convention, but he kind of has to start the ball rolling, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. The way the, the system works now is that, you know, years ago before we went to a primary system, uh, you know, candidates were chosen basically in, in back rooms by longtime, you know, politicians, right. uh, smoke, the traditional what smoke What used to be called rooms. smoke filled rooms, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. And, and, and in fact, I grew up in New York and my, I remember in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, my grandfather was one of those people who was a big wig in the Democratic Party. So I guess took part in some of those smoke filled rooms. But it doesn't work like that anymore. It's now a primary system. So voters get to choose who is going to be the candidate, the delegates now are all locked in to Joe Biden. So right. the only one who can free those delegates is Joe Biden. Yes. And I mean, at the moment, he certainly doesn't look as if that's going to be uh, something that no. he's going to want to do. So um, it's fascinating. Very interesting to talk to you, Charles. Thank you very much indeed. Charles Feldman, there, uh, host of KNX In Depth uh, from Los Angeles there. He's actually currently in Europe, uh, probably taking a break from the madness of the political, political world. But, you know, apparently one of the people who's urging um, Joe Biden to continue to run is not only his wife, Jill, but his son, Hunter. That's right. The former crack addict. Uh, who at one point was smoking crack every three hours. He's saying, stick with it, Dad, because uh, I'm sure you're going to win. Most people are not sure he's going to win.